Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Decree 71 of 2021, appointing members of the Board of Directors of the Oil and Gas Holding Company, Nuga Holding. According to the decree, the board shall include the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa as Deputy Chairman, Khalid Amru Aramehi, Dr. Mohammed Mubarak bin Dalne, Faisal Mohammed Al Mahrouz, Abdullah Jihad Al Zain. Hediyat Mohammed Fatala, Lord Edmund John Philip, Bob Warren Dudley and Tony Howard as members for a renewable three-year term. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, highlighted His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's continued appreciation for first responders in COVID-19, who persistently worked to safeguard the health of all the kingdom. In this regard, His Royal Highness directed the granting of two additional promotional steps in the civil service or the equivalent for first responders in Bahrain. His Royal Highness commended the vital role played by first responders and their patriotic contributions to the Kingdom's successes and achievements throughout these unprecedented times. His Royal Highness extended his gratitude to those who prioritised the well-being of the entire country, safeguarding the health of citizens and residents. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, inaugurated Al Dura Phase 2 independent water and power plant, located at Al Dura and managed 100% by the private sector. Al Dura Phase 2 generates 1,000 megawatts of electricity and processes 25 million gallons of water per day, increasing capacity by 24 and 15% respectively. During the visit, His Royal Highness noted that the investment in and the development of the Kingdom's water and electricity infrastructure in partnership with the private sector, supports ongoing housing and development and investment initiatives. He highlighted Bahrain's commitment to continue to develop water and energy projects alongside supporting infrastructure projects through innovative development initiatives, thus creating new opportunities for citizens as key members of the Team Bahrain, whilst also enhancing service delivery excellence. His Royal Highness was briefed on Al Dura Phase 2 operations, which are an extension of Phase 1 inaugurated by Her Majesty the King before touring the facilities. He expressed appreciation to the Minister of I IWA, the CEO of IWA and the Ministry's employees for the significant contribution to sustainability in the sector. For his part, the Minister of IWA commended His Majesty the King's directives to ensure that citizens remain at the heart of the ongoing development initiatives before commending His Royal Highness's support for water and electricity service quality. The Minister stated that Aldur 2 plant development is being implemented through a public-private contract which governs the establishment, ownership and operations in accordance with the BOO system to meet future energy and water demands. The Deputy Prime Minister, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the Southern Governor, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali Al Khalifa, the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, the Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs, Engineer Wal bin Nasser Al Mubarak, the CEO of IWA, Sheikh Nawab bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, and a number of senior officials and ambassadors were also in attendance.
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, met remotely with the Auditor General of the National Audit Office, the NAO, Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, who presented a forensic audit report on observations of non-compliance within the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Works, Municipality Affairs and Urban Planning, and the Ministry of Labour and Social Development. His Royal Highness stated that the principles of accountability and professionalism are of paramount importance to the success of the government work streams, adding that the NAO's reporting continues to support public service integrity and the proper management of public funds. The forensic audit report revealed a number of violations that require legal intervention, in relation to which His Royal Highness directed the observations of non-compliance to be referred to the Public Prosecution Service. The General Directorate of Anti-Corruption and Economic and Electronic Security or the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs, depending on jurisdiction and the nature of the violation. For his part, Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed expressed gratitude for the opportunity to meet His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and noted His Royal Highness's continued support to the NAO, emphasising its commitment to upholding operational best practice across government work streams in line with the, gov- the Kingdom's Sustainable Development Goals. A number of senior government officials also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, sent a cable of congratulations to the Prime Minister of Israel, Naftali Bennett, and Foreign Minister Yair Lapid, following the formation of a new Israeli government. His Royal Highness wished the incoming Israeli government success, underscoring that the formation of a new government was an opportunity to secure further development, stability and peace in the region. The Speaker of the Representatives Council of Azir Zainal held a remote meeting in the presence of the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, the Minister of Labour and Social Development, Jamil Hamidan, the Minister of the Shura and Representatives Council of Affairs, Ghanim bin Fafadal Abu Enin, the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Said Al Ziani, and members of Parliament. The Speaker affirmed the directors of His Majesty the King of the benefit of the Kingdom and its people in addition to overcoming the pandemic and ensuring the health and safety of all. She expressed thanks and appreciation for the continuous cooperation between the Council and the Government, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. The Speaker pointed out that holding this meeting is to enhance the cooperation between the Council and the Government and further unify national efforts in facing the pandemic in line with the wise vision of His Majesty the King. His Royal Highness the Crown, Sorry. the Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fazir Zanal, virtually met the President of the Belgian Chamber of Representatives, Hélène Tellieu. The Speaker praised the deep Bahraini Belgian relations and the Kingdom's keenness on developing cooperation in various fields in light of the comprehensive development process of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. Zanal affirmed the Council's keenness on exchanging meetings with the Belgian Chamber of Representatives at the level of members and the General Secretariat and to activate joint parliamentary friendship committees. The Speaker highlighted the keenness of the Bahraini Parliament to enhance cooperation with the European Parliament where they will review the achievements of the human rights file in Bahrain and achieved initiatives, projects, procedures and legislation. The Speaker of the Council of Representatives, Fazir Sanal, commended the directors of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to grant two exceptional promotional steps in the civil service or their equivalent to frontline responders. The Speaker affirmed that the move is based on His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's pride in the efforts exerted by the first responders in combating the novel coronavirus. She added that it is also a tribute to the services of frontline responders to citizens and residents in order to protect public safety and health, which contributed significantly to mitigating COVID-19 repercussions, earning Team Bahrain, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, local and international acclaim. She stated that His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister's directives will motivate everyone to be more dedicated in serving the nation, the citizens and residents noting that frontline heroes have placed national interests above everything else. It is also an international recognition of the plans, programmes and efforts of the government led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister in the area of health and social development.
this year our council chairman the Shira council chairman Ali Saleh hailed his majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa's continued pride in the first responders in combating COVID-19 and the directors of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa to grant two exceptional steps of promotion in the civil service or their equivalent to the frontline responders. Asali asserted that the kind gesture reflects the appreciation of the Kingdom's leadership and people for the tremendous efforts exerted by the workers for this vital sector, despite the challenges. The Shura Council Chairman affirmed that the first responders in combating the pandemic have set the best examples in their dedication, loyalty and sacrifices for the sake of the cherished nation, making them a source of pride for everyone. He stated that under His Majesty the King's leadership, the Kingdom has always been at the forefront of honouring dedicated exceptional efforts that contribute to maintaining its status and achievements at all levels. The President of the Supreme Council of Health and the Head of the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus, Lieutenant General uh, Dr Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, visited the new drive-through testing centre in Al Maharik Governorate, located near King Hamid University Hospital, on the occasion of its launch as the third drive-through testing centre in the Kingdom. In the presence of a number of members of the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus and senior officials in the health sector. Sheikh Mohammed uh, hailed the unlimited support of His Majesty the King and the continuous follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister of all national efforts of Team Bahrain to protect the health and safety of all citizens and residents. He affirmed the pride of all health sector workers in the royal praise of the national medical team, stressing that it is a source of inspiration and motivation to accept further efforts. He also hailed His Royal Highness's meeting with a number of senior officials and the National Medical Task Force and support of His Royal Highness of their efforts. He noted that the new centre aims to increase the capacity for COVID-19 testing and reduce waiting periods within the framework of the efforts made to combat the virus. He stressed that the new centre is equipped with the best medical standards. Dr Sheikh Mohammed highlighted the sincere national efforts of the medical and health cadres and the level of cooperation and coordination between relevant authorities to apply the precautionary measures. In a new international achievement added to the Kingdom's record, the World Health Organization announced Manama as the first Middle Eastern capital to become a health city. The announcement came during a virtual celebration in the presence of the Minister of Health, Faika Asali, the capital governor, Hisham bin Abdurrahman Al Khalifa, the WHO Regional Director for Eastern Mediterranean, Dr Ahmed Abmandari, and a number of Bahraini officials. On this occasion, the Health Minister affirmed the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the directors of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, which earned Manama its title as a health city. Minister Al Saleh congratulated the Capital Governor on the WHO's accreditation, which is considered one of the most prominent preventative programmes as it contributes to achieving the goals of sustainable development and promotes the name of the Kingdom. For his part, the Capital Governor dedicated this achievement to His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince. He noted that this international achievement reflects the Kingdom's keenness on investing in health infrastructure and promoting services at all levels. He expressed thanks to the Minister of Interior, Sheikh Rajah bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the Minister of Health and WHO, particularly the Regional Officer for Community-Based Initiatives and Healthy Settings at the WHO, Dr Sama al -Fiki. For his part, the WHO Regional Director for the Eastern Mediterranean affirmed that Manama is the first capital in the Middle East to be designated a health city and the second city in Bahrain following Umm al Hassan. He praised the programmes launched by the Capital Governorate. He also commended the way Bahrain has been dealing with the coronavirus pandemic, adding that it is one of the most successful models around the world. To speak more about this achievement, we are joined on the phone by the Director of Health Promotion at the Ministry of Health, Dr Wafa Ibrahim Al Shabati. Hello, Dr Wafa. Good evening. Good evening. Tell us about the King of Bahrain's great advancement that led to be named a healthy city by the WHO. So to be accredited as a healthy city by WHO, Manama had to fulfill a set of 80 criteria in different fields, like in health, water supply, sanitation, food safety, air pollution, education, emergency response, and many other fields. 
And in order to fulfill these criteria, the capital governorate in collaboration with other governmental and non-governmental sectors launched many projects and initiatives. Um, as you know, the Healthy City Program is one of the most important preventive programs of WHO and it contributes to achieving most of the sustainable development goals. The Ministry of Health worked closely with the Capital Governorate to get the accreditation and we are so proud to be part of this achievement, especially that Manama, as you said, is the first capital in the eastern Mediterranean region to receive this accredit accreditation. And that was the Director of Health Promotion at the Ministry of Health, Dr. Wafa Ibrahim al Shabati. Thank you for joining us. The Municipalities Affairs at the Ministry of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning allocated additional external spaces in Manama Central Market of up to 1,000 square metres to support active Bahraini farm owners to become a main platform for selling local produce through 40 selling vendors with a nominal monthly fee. The organisation of commercial spaces designated for import activities has been completed. Temporary use of fruit licences have been issued to limited and licensed use, in addition to the creation of commercial units to serve the food import sector within the wholesale market. This step comes in light of the remarkable development that Manama Central Market is undergoing and the interest in its facilities through plans and comprehensive maintenance programmes adopted by the Ministry of Works represented by the Capital Municipality to advance all facilities and services. The Royal Humanitarian Foundation, the RHF, has launched its summer programme 2021 for its sponsored families. It will be held in accordance with the precautionary measures to combat the novel coronavirus and strike a balance between the educational and training requirements on one hand and the necessary infrastructure on the other. For more information about the programme, we are joined over the phone by the Assistant Secretary General of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, Mr. Yosef Abdullah al -Yakub. Hello, Mr. Yosef. Hello, sir. Hello. Tell us about the RHF Summer Programme and what it includes. Thank you for asking this question uh, at this time, really. Uh, the Summer Programme uh, for this year is not just activity for spending luxurious time, but rather uh, an activity that refines the orphans' personality, gain them skill and experience, and satisfy their mental and social needs in a sound educational manner that contributes to building a positive personality capable of taking responsibility and effective social participation. And Royal Highness, uh, Royal Humanitarian Fund Foundation, is the staff is keen to provide a creative and developmental program to develop orphans, talent and skills, satisfy their desire for learning and exploration, support their individual skills and creative ability, and explore their talent according to a dynamic approach characterizing in many aspects by fun and entertainment. This summer program also comes within the framework of an integrated plan developed by Royal Humanitarian Foundation staff to provide appropriate and comprehensive programs such as educational workshops, training lectures, in different fields like health, sports, media, stock market, farming, and agriculture, with such programs, we are aiming to provide them with information and understanding how to deal, stay fit, maintain health. We also seek to provide information on digital currency, market study, money circulation, or simple things such as turning the kitchen into a healthy place and planting what they can use in cooking. In addition to that, and as the summer activity coincides with the Eid uh, Al-Adha holiday, we are trying not to let them uh, forget about the activities of Hayya uh, Biyya, which they have planned and they let it go in the sea, 
as well the Hanna night, which is one night before the Eid. These activities will go as per uh, the requirements and uh, distancing. How will the program be implemented during the current health circumstances? Thank you for this question again. Uh, the summer activity this year will be presented remotely in line with the precautionary measures for the COVID-19 pandemic. And Royal, High and Royal Humanitarian Foundation is working to the contents of the program this year in proportion to those procedures and assuring, uh, providing all the requirements for the success of the program in terms of ensuring that the program vocabulary is aligned with the requirements of education and the training remotely, the necessary infrastructure and ensuring that orphans and widows are using the relevant electronic communication program and follow up on them and ensuring that they get the desired benefit. Therefore, we shall be providing them with this motivational competition, which is to collect participation points for the whole family in, to encourage them to stay at home in this their time in what what is useful and beneficiary and help them reveal their talent and ability and to provide them with the appropriate opportunity to organize ways and means of investing time and changing the style, thinking and culture of participation in order to develop talent, creativity and innovation. And that was the Assistant Secretary General of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, Mr. Yusuf Abdullah Ayakub. Thank you for joining us. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,030,627 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 868,925 had taken the second. The Ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 12,213 with 1,495 recoveries, 792 registered new cases and 15 deaths. 392 of the new registered cases are expatriates. 393 are contacts of active cases and seven are travel related. The Ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.